What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another episode of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango, and joining me, as always, are Robert T. Felice. Hello. And Callum Wiggins. Yay, the year's almost over. Yes, it is indeed, and that means that we have another mailbag. This is for November, and we are going to be taking the questions that you guys have submitted, and not all of them, but most of them, and uh, answering them, because that's what you do with questions, instead of just, I don't know, rolling them up into a ball and sticking them away for a better time. Uh, November mailbag. I am actually very surprised we didn't get, if I remember correctly, any questions about Thanksgiving. Um. So I want to start things off about that. Uh, Thanksgiving, you guys, uh, thumbs up or thumbs down about the holiday? Uh, This year in particular, thumbs down. I'm actually just, um, since my family's all scattered around anyway, I'm just going to make myself some steak and work. So, yay. Happy Thanksgiving. Steak's better than turkey. Yeah, I'll give you that. (laughs) You you obviously don't celebrate it, Callum, but... uh... Yeah, I'm just going to say, like, speaking of thumbs, he's got two thumbs and doesn't give a crap about Thanksgiving. Yeah. This guy. It's... You don't have any form of Thanksgiving at all? No, because we've got nothing to give thanks for. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, we're headed that way. Yeah, that's very true. Maybe, uh, you know how, like, they do, like, the presidential pardoning of the turkey thing? Yeah. Maybe it'll like, just turn might... into something worse. Maybe I'll incorporate some sort of Thanksgiving when I, when the like Brexit finally takes place and I fall my own country to get away from it and rejoin the European <laughs> Union. <laughs> uh, Thanksgiving is one of those holidays to me that I'm I'm not really all that big on. Uh, the meal is not my favorite meal, and that seems to be the only thing people really care about. So it's yeah, it's fine. It's not the best, but hey, still happy Thanksgiving, to everybody who is listening to this. Most likely later on tonight, on Wednesday or on Thursday, if you guys are doing that. And uh, I don't know you could use this as an excuse to not have to be around your family if you want to, you know, get away with it. Be like, I have to listen to a podcast or something like that. <laughs> then it'd be like, you're listening to this shit. That's what you have to be thankful for. But uh, we have you guys to be thankful for, not only for sending these questions in, but for all your support and different things like that. So we're gonna dive into these questions, starting off by the ones from Isaac Allen. Pick one band move to bring back. Uh, my go-to reaction was actually them being able to say back to you at the end of an interview. It's not really a move, but it was the first thing I thought of. They don't do that anymore? No, they just stare off into the nothingness. Really? Oh. Um, yeah, that's actually pretty good. They should say back to you, but when I think of band moves, my mind immediately says pile driver. That was my second one, yeah. It's a little dangerous, but at the same time, I love the pile driver. Yeah, I, I love that. that. Yeah, I think that's probably the... It, it's a move that obviously has its danger associated with it, but if it's done correctly, it causes no damage whatsoever. And nowadays, it's been away for so long that it's going to get a huge pop whenever it's used. That one pile driver that Punk did, I ended up giving that my smart out moment of the year that year, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Or like my favorite spot of the year or something like that. Like I, I gave it an end of the year award because it was just like, a pile driver happened, yay! Isn't that crazy? A simple pile driver and people lost their shit. It was like, yes, pile driver. I'd, I'd a... love to... Go ahead. I'd say I'd love to see Kevin Owens bring back the package pile driver. Yeah, he'd be a good uh, one for that because he could really pick somebody up and just drive them down safely and make it look like it hurts like a son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. But here's another move that WWE should go back to listening to their fans and trying to entertain them. When have they ever done that? Uh, attitude error a little bit. <laughs> well, they listen to Jerry Springer fans, yeah, and then they <laughs> incorporate <laughs> their fan <laughs> for that. Bye. Want, want to go back to that? By all means. Mm, I don't know. It kind of depends. If you give me uh, New Age Outlaws, yeah. If you give me Beaver Cleavage, pass. Ooh. Let's see. Question number two from Isaac. Do you think that the fat guys, <laughs> Samoa Joe, Kevin Owens, Cassius Ono, would be treated better if they had lost weight. I think Big Show got punished by having to wear the purple singlet when he got fat. Maybe that's what happened to Kevin Owens when he jobbed abroad for ages. I don't know if that's necessarily the case with Kevin Owens, but I definitely think if they lost weight, they'd get more of a push. It's probably the only thing holding Samoa Joe back, for instance. I didn't think that the purple singlet was a punishment. I thought 
it actually made him it was something different for him and I thought it worked. Works for Grimace. I I I obviously they would be treated better if they were muscular because that's what Vince Man likes. But well I for one personally just like the fact that there's variants of body types that are performing. And it, oh it it's obviously hurting their push. There's no doubt about the fact. But like Big Show's always been that big and he's usually got like he's always been in and around the main event of WWE. So I guess it just depends on how tall you are, proportionate to your weight as well. Yeah, maybe so if uh, Samoa Joe added an extra like half a foot to himself, it would just be like, let's push this guy to the moon, you know? I mean, hey, if you ever wanted to wonder why uh, Big Dick Johnson didn't get anywhere, that's the reason. <laughs> yeah, that was terrible. Otherwise, he'd be a multiple-time world champion, right? As Big Dick Johnson, you think? Uh, they might like once he became a uh, like world champion, they might have to change it to like just large Richard Johnson instead, just to make <laughs> him feel a bit more. <laughs> Sophisticated. Less big in a certain way, Dick Johnson. <laughs> uh, where do we leave off at? We off at Isaac's uh, third and last question from him. What do you think of Ken Shamrock's return? Good for him. Uh, I don't know if that's really going to go all that well, but hey, if he's able to, I liked Ken Shamrock back in the day. Thumbs up. Have you seen his grammatically? Yeah. Return tweet and then Randy Orton's reply. I loved that. Randy Orton's so good just for being a dick. You know, like, I want to see that match. I want to see Randy Orton versus Ken Shamrock. If he can still go and it's like a one time thing, like, because I know Dan Seven still wrestles on occasion. Really? Wow. So he had a match with uh, Matt Riddle a couple of years ago, funny enough. So. If if he can still put out like a few things, just break out the um the ankle lock every now and again, then I'm sure I'm sure it will go well. I wonder if when he snaps that it's the same, or if it's just sort of like he snaps and now he's like I don't know like about half is what it what he used to be or something, you know. Well, I wonder if he snaps, a part of his body also snaps. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Shamrock snapped his hips. Go to Howard's questions here. He says, I got to marry Fuck Hill for you, the four horse women of the MMA. Uh, I, I still don't know the process of this. If you have a marry Fuck Hill game thing and you have four people, what's the fourth thing supposed to be, really? I think it's just open to interpretation. I think you just pick another one of the, out of the three options. That's uh, why I did it. Yeah, I guess that's how you would. That's, that's the easiest way of doing it. I know uh, Drew, I think his suggestion was the fourth one should be cuck, which is just like... Oh, Jesus. Uh, come on, Drew. Ah. <laughs> I mean, in order to do that, wouldn't you have to fuck one of their husbands? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah. God knows what's going on with that one. That'd be yeah, the worst option then. Drew. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'd go marry Rhonda, kill Baszler, and F the other two. But... Uh, that's really not I don't know that's a hard one well outside of Baszler they're all considerably attractive um so yeah I guess kill Baszler yeah I'm going with Tony's order Mary Ronda kill Baszler and fuck the other two uh I mean you have to marry Ronda just because of the money regardless yeah, as much as anything I think else exactly although well if rumors are true that she's a bit of a nightmare to deal with, well, at least her husband seems happy with her, so I guess I guess she can rein it in on occasion. Uh, and I mean, I don't really have any feelings towards Jasmine Duke, Maria Shafir, or Shayna Baszler. So uh, fuck all of them, kill all of them. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know too much about them either, too. Like, yeah, personality-wise or something like they're, you know, I know like they're very basic kind of uh outline i mean i i, I like shana baszler as a person she seems like a very like she, she seems, she seems like, like, like she has person. a bit of a, yeah, she, she seems, seems like, yeah like a personality wise from what i have seen she seems like the one i probably get along with the most yeah so if i wasn't so hung up on the money i probably would marry her over ronda 
which would make the whole decision process easier, but the money is just too good to turn down. <laughs> this one I have to opt out on. He says, if you were to bring KM, Falaba, or Grotto, or Grado, from TNA to WWE's main roster, which one would it be and why? I have no idea who any of those are. They're so three I... Impact Wrestling names. Well, yeah, they still well. Is it Grotto or Grado? Grado. Uh, out of these, like, they're all really comedy characters. Like, KM is the one that looks like the most legitimate wrestler, but he's a bit generic outside of the comedy stuff. I think the one that has the highest ceiling in WWE, and frankly, none of them have a high ceiling in WWE, it would be Falabar. Just because of the size factor. He looks like uh, Yokozuna. He really does look like Yoko. Yeah. And his gimmick is that he just says bar. Bar. So, <laughs> he, can't, he can't speak English, he just says bar. Well, that's a healthy so gimmick. Like, he's like Groot. So we got like a guy that's like Groot, that's like a Yokozuna, and we got Grado shoot first, I guess. Um. No, well, he's a. Well, I I don't really know how to describe Grado. He he might I mean, he's he, a very comedy based wrestler. I think he would probably go the furthest because they would do so much with him comedy wise. Yeah, he's kind of like a really fat Santino. Yeah. Hmm. Not, not soup and. Yeah, and Scottish, obviously, so he wouldn't be able to... He's just as... Un, like, his accent is just as bad to understand as Santino's one as well, so... So they would turn him into Fat Bastard? Oh, oh they so would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he comes out to Madonna's Like a Prayer. Hmm. Well, he, he does that when, obviously, he's not on TV. When or he's not on that. TV for TNA. <laughs> yeah, I'm not... Uh, I'm not liking the sound of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I I would probably go with Falaba just because I think WWE has always done well with those you know bulky fat monsters. At the very least, uh, have them do a monster push for a couple of months and then become a joke like all the other ones do. Okay, he's now. Uh, let's go to Declan. He says apparently Tim Allen and Tom Hanks both struggled to make it through the final scene in Toy Story 4 with Hanks turning away from the producer so they wouldn't see him crying. I'm not sure how big a fan of the Toy Story franchise you are, but I wanted to know what you guys think will happen in Toy Story 4 that could have made them so emotional. Uh, well, I guess first question is, what do you guys think about Toy Stories? Uh, Love the Toy Story it's series. amazing. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. Because I was going to say, if anybody was like, you know, ah, I'm not a big fan of that, it would have been like, what the hell do you not like? These movies are great. It's like one of the... The most sound trilogies out there. Toy Story Three is one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, I struggled to get to the end of that. <laughs> like, I yeah, don't know was... how to do with this. God, how dark can you get when it's just like, all right, let's all hold hands and incinerate and all that. So it's like, if this is even worse than that, God forbid what the fourth thing has. Well, I guess. Well, I don't want to speculate. Well, obviously, you can only speculate because don't know what the real answer is. The only guess would be is that one of them breaks. Right, that's like, you know, like the Buzz Lightyear's battery pack dies and he yeah. dies or something like. Or they get, or they get separated, and one of them just goes with another kid or something like that and leaves because they're happy. But it's I don't, a... I don't like the sound of any of this. God, yeah, I didn't even think about the idea that like Woody could go to a different person from Buzz or something. I mean that's. Yeah, I mean, if it's gotten that emotional, there must be something. I mean, I kind of hope it's something that will just round off the series because it's already. I don't want to say it's bad because it's got Toy Story Four. All three movies have been great, and it's fine to like build up for it, even if the third one did have a pretty like perfect ending. So I'm not gonna just like go out and shit on it, saying, "Oh, why are they doing the fourth one? The, the first three were so great." Because the fourth one could be great, but you don't. You you're kind of hoping that this ending is going to be impactful, but not in a bad way. See, the, what the I don't know exactly what the premise of Toy Story 4 is, but I think it's supposed to have something to do with a carnival. Yet, at the same time, the only thing that I've seen is this idea that they've got this, like, fork. Yeah, that, and... that teaser trailer put me off a bit. See, I actually kind of liked it a little bit, because it, I like the idea that if I'm uh, understanding this correctly, it's there's a fork that has like pipe cleaners attached to it, 
and they're exploring the idea of this thing is a it's a fork, so it's not a toy, but this kid makes it a toy and it struggles with like the identity disorder of being like I'm not a toy, I'm supposed to be like a fork, <laughs> which oh, is so ridiculous oh, I, and I, I, I love like that. that. I mean I don't I, like the sound of that. I mean I I I'll give it a chance, obviously, to see, like, if there is some legs in the idea of a toy have or a, a fork having an existential crisis because he's not actually a toy. But when I first saw it, I just went, oh, my God, that's like the um, Ewoks in Star Wars. It's like this is just something used to sell spork, well, forky things or whatever going forward. Callum, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I getting too commercial? for? Uh, but so... no, none of this sounds enjoyable i gotta tell you the premise i'm looking at for this says I, i'm assuming bonnie's the girl from the end of the last movie i believe so yes it says when bonnie introduces forky a handmade toy made from a spork who has an existential crisis wanting to be a spork and not a toy woody and the gang set off on a road trip adventure to help him understand how to be a toy along the way they discover how big the world can really be for toys so i'm assuming that that's where the carnival comes in but that's like Okay, does that mean that, like, Forky breaks? Or, like, what? I don't know. I kind of like the idea of Forky already. So, no matter what, based off a of Toy Story, it's going to be a tearjerker. And uh, Toy Story 1 is one of my three uh, favorite Disney movies. It's Toy Story, Aladdin, and The Lion King. But wow, wow, Toy Story really 2, know. you have my age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's a good choice, though. You can't go wrong with those three. That's the thing. And uh, Toy Story 4 is going to be great, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I ha have faith in Pixar. They're like the NXT of Disney. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. They were like the kind of developmental territory that knew what to do. Taken over <laughs> by the bigger company, kind of, so to speak. <laughs> They're so determined to make you emotional. Though. They're just... That is their goal. I mean, that first couple minutes of Up... Jesus. The whole movie of Coco. I didn't see Coco, actually. Very good. You should watch it. Yeah, it's on my list of, like, why have I not bothered to see this yet? At least with Cars, I know the reason I don't want to see it is because it's shit, but... <laughs> yeah, I didn't like that theory. Yeah. When you advertise it as being, like, Larry the Cable Guy is a car in this one, it's like, okay, well, I don't need to see this. Uh... Sent in by Peter. Let's go to him. A uh, couple of different questions here. Do you think four to seven weeks of pay-per-views and special events, WWE needs to ch take the chill pill and slow down, rush decisions, not looking good. Even I feel burned out for crying out loud. Yeah, imagine how we feel. <laughs> it's a... They cut payback, battleground, clash of champions, no mercy. And I, I think another event. And then they decided to just cram them all in at like a two month period and it has sucked so bad because they are splitting the difference between different things. And I have to imagine hell in a cell would have been better if they wouldn't have had super showdown coming right up after that crown jewel was utterly pointless. Survivor series was like a last minute ditch effort kind of thing. Evolution was pretty good, but man, I am so burned out. And the fact that we got TLC coming up in a couple weeks that break after TLC is going to be so fun. Just like... Yeah, huh. and then you know that they're going to start caring about what they do. Like, that's going to be great. Yeah. Ah, back just cracked. I don't know if that got picked up on the podcast. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> Falling apart here. It's the pipe views that just... like It really is. Apart. Yeah. Uh... What do you think of the whole Apu situation on The Simpsons? What do you think about the latest development where The Simpsons used Apu and his wife as background characters on a recent episode? Uh, recent it's episode bullshit. type like, stuff. I don't know what happens with that, but they send out those episodes well enough in advance that I'm sure that that was before the whole problem came up. But it's stupid. It's bullshit. Yeah, there's this. this no reason to he's been a long established character and you can't just let certain people's sensitivities take over especially when his character has been around for so long and has shown that he's just he's not just a stereotype 
Right. What is offensive about Apu? Is it the fact that he has an accent? Because if that's the case, I'm pretty sure the people that are getting offended about it are the ones that are racist. It would be worse if he were supposed to be like an Indian character who didn't have an accent because he grew up in India. His backstory is that. So, yeah, he would have an accent. And if they're going to bitch and complain about like, well, you should only have that if that's an Indian actor doing it. Well, doesn't Hank Azaria have some kind of like a Middle Eastern background to him? I kind of think that he's at least a little bit something. I can't I can't say for certain, but I mean I know they've obviously built storylines and jokes on the past of just oh, built on the fact of Apu's uh Indian heritage. Which I guess some sensitive people would place as like stereotyping, but it's it's all done in quite harmless fun, really. It's not like they use it to say, Oh, this is what all Indian people are like or right. Oh, yeah, because um I don't know, like with the octuplets it's not like they're saying oh well all indian people have eight children all at the same time it's like it's just, it's, they're just characters they're characters that have a different heritage a different background and so getting rid of it is saying okay so what you just want another american running the store mm-hmm. just have this be john anderson or something and they even make yeah. a point when it comes to an episode that he doesn't go back on his ethnicity to try to fit in more when it's the whole immigration thing, immigrants. I knew it was them. Even when it was the bears, I knew it was the immigrants. That kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Like they make it a point that it's like you can be proud of where you come from and embrace yourself. He has the statue of Ganesha on the counter. And he you know, he does the whole the nine Mets are my favorite squadron and all that. And it's like, well, that episode was basically revolving around the idea of we should let more people into uh american culture and be you know this uh homo- not homogenized but like you know what i mean uh yeah harmonious so that was how many years ago that episode that was like season nine or something probably that was and a long time ago yeah even back then they had the the foresight of being able to do that so it's almost anti something to be upset about you know so so what you're saying tony is that we shouldn't take all people and all groups and put it into one centralized <laughs> bit and instead embrace the fact that there's a lot of diversity and culture in different places and just pick and choose which ones we want to follow rather than, you know, just make it all about one sense of thing. I think uh, if you have the right idea to merge. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it this way. If Apu, uh, if Apu's eight kids were one kid with all the personality, it's all right to merge. <laughs> he doesn't need I, eight of them. I think we're in a ridiculous time where it's like, well, this became a stereotype and, you know, kids got quote unquote bull- bullied with the thank you, come again, and but, like, they, that doesn't mean, okay, abandon ship and just forget the character that is, like, 30 years old. You know what I mean? This is a fully grown character. You can't just say, all right, we're not going to touch it. He's just not going to be referenced in any show or anything. And I also and, think you, if you're standing on your soapbox, admit that you've done something that would be offensive to you if you want to bitch and complain like that. Like, you mean to tell me that you've never made a joke about like Italian people being in the mob or done an impression of the Godfather, or you've never like, I don't know, like made some kind of a, a knock at like some kind of a Jewish related thing or made some kind of a knock at like a Christian related thing or made some kind of a knock at people from Canada or, you know what I mean? Like there's, at some point in everybody's life, they've made some kind of a joke that has been based off of something that somebody is going to have been offended by. So get off your ass about it. Hey, I watched this hey. thing that uh, really annoyed me. It was um, the React channel on YouTube, and it was Does It Hold Up? Which was like, uh, let's take teenagers and show them something and see if they think that it holds up now. And the episode was about Seinfeld. 
And all these people are bitching and complaining about like, this is horribly offensive and you couldn't do this nowadays and all that. And it's like, it's fucking funny. It's the same thing with friends. I've seen so many posts about how friends is so it, all it does is fat shame and, you know, body shame people. And it, it's one of the worst shows ever on television. And it's like this show and Seinfeld literally defined generations and it was you know pop culture for so long just because you know obviously things have changed at such a rapid pace sorry that you know certain things weren't all over media 20 years ago they weren't all over the world either you know what i mean yeah i'm sorry that in 1993 people had a sense of humor (laughs) and also let's not like like be around the bush there are people like that you can't just like like we're saying, but to go talk to loads of different people. It's there are people that fat shame people, there are people that are racist, there are people that are like really negative towards like gender stereotyping or anything along those lines. But yeah, you can't I'm, say not saying, that. I'm not saying you shouldn't yeah, I'm not saying you should like celebrate them or thing, but you have to demonstrate those values because that's people are like that. Yeah. Now I'm just like Simpsons, pretend they're on. If the Simpsons at any point had been like I don't know, like, the joke being, like, uh, Apu, that, like, Indian person, uh, and then, like, started, like, making episodes, like, making fun of that, and being, like, oh, what a bad person he is, or something like that, then it would have been, like, all right, this is, like, shitty. But for the most part, Apu's been a a character that they kind of have a sort of reverence about, like, they uh, they make fun of it a little bit when it comes to the the bachelor episode but they call attention to they're like hey he's a successful business owner and like a damn good date and different things like that and it's like for him to be like an eligible bachelor how's that a problem you know, they compare him to the shitty quote unquote white people that are yellow in the simpsons and they're a cartoon to begin with and it's a fucking comedy so, and are we really gonna sit here and say that like people don't have accents? You know what I mean? I don't mm-hmm. understand. I don't understand the issue. Yeah, I that's the thing is I don't understand what's offensive about Apu. And if somebody understands that and they want to drop a comment below, by all means try to explain it to me, because to me, by that rationale, they should get they should get rid of groundskeeper Willie, and they should get rid of Superintendent Chalmers, and they should get rid of uh you know, oh, I'm terribly offended that uh, when they went to New York in the episode that they gave people New York accents, what do they think? They all talk like that? Like, or, you know, like, it's just like, you know, get off your ass. <laughs> it's like, I'm sure anybody listening to this has uh, well past their limit of being offended over the course of Smack Talks 380 yeah. or whatever episode. So I'm sure you guys all agree with us. Let's talk about Stan Lee. Uh, Peter asks, what do you think of Stan Lee's legacy? Have any good memories of the man to share? Uh, I don't have any personal memories, but Stan Lee was awesome. And I kind of put him on the same pedestal as Walt Disney, where he was a trailblazer in a lot of ways. He wasn't single-handedly responsible for everything that's in Marvel, and I think that some people lose track of that. Like, Jack Kirby did a lot. Kind of the same as like when people talk about Bob Kane and they forget about Bill Finger when it comes to Batman and everything. But Stan yep. Lee is an entirely different animal because he was a pop culture icon. He was the type of guy that represented fandom at a time where it wasn't necessarily cool. And he's been a big character for decades, you know, like even in the 90s animated series, Stan Lee was still a big enough name that they had Stan Lee in the final episode of the Spider-Man show. Such a good show. So he did a lot. He uh, he really kind of like kept that Comic Con spirit going in a lot of different ways, and obviously an inspiration to a lot of different people, and made up some great characters. So he is really one of those imaginative people that is responsible for a, a lot because you you factor in the characters that he's made and their impact. Spider Man alone is the type of thing that you hear a lot of people say like that got me through high school because I could identify with being picked on or, you know, the incredible Hulk, you know, I've got anger issues and like the Hulk makes sense to me or, uh, 
you know, like Iron Man or the Fantastic Four or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. He was a big, big part of pop culture. And without him, it's kind of like losing somebody like a Walt Disney a little bit. I agree. Yeah, 100% agree with everything you just said. Um, just to hear Stan Lee in interviews talk about well, his visions for hero, superheroes and what a superhero should stand for. The thing that he talks about, the idea that he, that they need to be part human and they have to like overcome like struggles and difficulties that real people go through. And it's just a way of saying that real people can be heroes themselves because they can see themselves actually in the characters. Whereas, I mean, th- there's obviously like the balance between DC and Marvel stuff, and DC definitely has a lot of charms and tells some fantastic stories as well. But you can't really see yourself being Superman because you'll never be Superman. Whereas, what do you mean you I won't? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you, Tony, but nobody else will. But it's just <laughs> a sense like everybody of... else. <laughs> but it's just a sense of like. I mean, tell the story of Spider-Man. I mean, you're not, it's not going to happen in real life, but like, there is the potential that somebody could get bitten by a radioactive spider and then have to deal with all the stuff because the stuff that Spider-Man has to deal with is not, I'd say, realistic, but it's still just overcoming challenges and obstacles that trying to balance a secret identity with your real life. It's stuff that people do have to go through or people could potentially go through. And it's just... Well, it's more about the ideas of, like saying the responsibility and having to protect people and trying to protect the ones you love, even though you're trying to protect just random strangers as well. It's, it's all really good stories. I forget. And even who... down to where they, even down to where they live, like Stanley always said, you know, I didn't want them to be from Gotham because everybody knows New York. Why not just say like, yeah, they're in New York. This, these are real people. Yeah. He really grounds them in the reality and I forget who it was that had said it. So I can't give credit to like the outlet or whatever, but somebody attributed the difference between DC and Marvel as DC characters are gods trying to be human and Marvel characters are humans trying to live up to the potential of being gods. That's so you, the good way of doing it. You start off with like, you know, without, uh, with great power comes great responsibility that ex- that exhibits everything out of Marvel. You've got somebody who's a regular person. They're given some kind of extra responsibility, power, strength, position, whatever the case may be. And it's like, how do I, as a normal person, deal with the stress of insert situation? You know, mm-hmm. like, because you look at like, even Batman. Batman's my favorite character out of anything that's ever existed. And Batman is like, people refer to him as Bat God because he's like, well, Batman's always right. He will always prepare ahead of time. He always knows the way to get out of a situation. Even when he gets like a a bad thing happens, it ends up somehow working out in the end. You know, Jason Todd gets beaten to death. Somehow he's back to life, like, you know, whatever. But you look at like, okay, well, if I were in Batman's shoes, well, I would be fucked because Batman just always has the the plan. If I were in Spider-Man's shoes and there's like a scroll invasion, I would be freaking out. And then you look at what Spider-Man does and he's like, I'm freaking out. And you're like, oh, I get it. You know, like, and, you know, he told a lot of stories that dealt with uh, topics that were kind of like, let's teach a lesson. So that's good. He's not quite on par with, you know, like a, uh, Mr. Rogers or something, but to a certain type of audience that translates pretty well. And man, I'm really interested in seeing what things that they had pre-recorded ahead of time for those cameos. Cause whatever that last one is going to be, it's going to be a little tough. It's good. Yeah. It's going to be emotional to get through. Like, I, I kind of hope uh, that the last one's Avengers four. You type so. My favorite Stanley cameo actually wasn't in a movie. He was a, uh, in a guest spot on the Simpsons. And one of the funniest <laughs> things I've ever heard was he can't be the Hulk because I'm the Hulk. <laughs> yeah. Stanley swears that he once transformed into the Hulk and he's like trying to do it. He really did it once. <laughs> Even better. I like the part where uh, he takes data's uh, Batmobile and he's like, he takes the thing figure, puts it in there, smashes it. And he's like, ah, you broke my Batmobile. And he's like, broke or made it better. <laughs> I thought yeah. that was great. Yeah, this 
there's there, there's nothing positive things to really say about Stanley, and the world's kind of a sadder place now that he's gone. At a yeah. time where we really can't have the world be a sadder place because it's already pretty tough as it is. Yeah, 2018, man. <laughs> so. Yeah, that that was kind of like a real like crap way to end to get towards the end of it as well. But it goes with the theme, you know. I I tweeted this out. I said, you know, what an entertainer. He goes with the snap. Thanos <laughs> takes out half of the universe, and Stan Lee's like, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, that's so gonna be all that much better when they beat Thanos. Especially if, like, oh, man, imagine how it would be if they do something, like, if they would have had the foresight to have, like, the snap gets undone and you see people rematerialize and one of them is Stan Lee. People will erupt in the theater about they that. They still potentially do that. They could do things like, um, they must be able to, like, use CG or, like, uh, holograms or something like that for that to work. Yeah, if they've got the tech for it, I mean, that would be kind of fun to do. Just to be like, hey, he'll always be around. Excelsior, you know, like that kind of thing. They yeah. could just take, like, uh, the audio clip of him saying Excelsior and pull that off or something um, about true believers. I'm sure that they will find a way to do the most fitting tribute possible for him in the movie. The next one that comes out is Captain Marvel. So maybe that one comes out and says, like, dedicated to Stan Lee or something, too. I'm pretty know. sure. I'm, I'm, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if all of them now are kind of like partially dedicated to Stanley. That's true. They're, they could just do some in the credits about that. They definitely should do it for the Avengers 4. Yeah. At the very least for that one. <laughs> uh, let's move on to, are you getting annoyed with Cole? Keep on asking Renee about Dean. She's had no answers to quote her once. I haven't seen Dean in weeks. Yeah, I think it's uh okay. People keep asking about this, and here's the thing: if you're gonna have some semblance of realism, you have to understand that they are married. So if somebody's acting a little unhinged or not like themselves, wouldn't you go, "Hey, wait a minute! This is your husband. You have to know something." So it's only a logical thing to me that they would ask his wife, hey, what's in his head? I think that they really shouldn't have been calling too much attention to it, though. Like, one time they go like, Renee, you should know what's going on. What's up? And then when she says, yeah, he's in a weird spot right now. He doesn't really talk about it all that much. I'm trying to get him to seek counseling. There you go. Good enough. I think that there's more to the story and that she'll eventually be a bigger part of it there oh i mean there's a, i don't say like a lot of speculation but there's reasonable speculation that she might go heal with dean and become a heel commentator but uh i, I don't really see that as a good fit for her so i don't think that's going to happen but i mean like like rob says there has to be some sort of level of communication with her just because they've acknowledged the relationship if they hadn't acknowledged the relationship then there wouldn't be any issue but because they have they have to at least mention it on occasion but they are hammering it home a bit too much and the fact that she just keeps saying oh i don't know what to tell you even means that they're just doing it to like annoy her or annoy us or they're just doing it or they haven't come up with the reason why she hasn't she can't say anything yet Mainly because they don't actually really know what Dean Ambrose's problem is too much. Yeah. Like he's he's he said bits and pieces, but it's been mainly quite vague. So, well, that Chronicle special went a long way into like getting into his mind. Yeah, I really don't like it that they do. You have to watch something else to figure out. Is why can't you just watch the TV show that you're watching and try to figure it out from there? Because it's not NXT. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point. What do you think of the Lucha Dragons? He means the Lucha House Party being called up to Raw. Is it like 205 Not Live exists? These guys came from there. Wait, I don't know what that necessarily means, but um, Lucha House Party going over to Raw. I think that that's WWE panicking, realizing that when Survivor Series came along that they had no tag teams. Yep. Yeah, I guess so. But the I fact they have been keep winning. Too. Like, this dude was supposed to be a big deal. He was like a two-time U.S. champion, and now he's just kind of lost in the cruiserweight shuffle. 
well, they've got the real Rey Mysterio right now, so they don't need. <laughs> this is true. They don't need Kalisto anymore. He failed. In you, his, they could the, use him to get Kalisto over. Uh, I don't. I don't like to be too harsh towards him, but I wouldn't like Mysterio to be wasted on Kalisto <laughs> because he's but already he kind of he's already kind of proven that he's just not really he doesn't really have it and he's too error prone. You don't so, think that with Mysterio's tutelage he can become somebody who can do an even better lucha thing? That's what I wanted to say, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd I'd love like them to just have a promo segment and Mysterio says that he he just does that, like a mockery of that. Like, Probably like, no, you do bad lucha things. You do bad things. Just for the hell of it, one time, whether it's next year or not, I would like to see a Survivor Series team that's Grand Metalik, Lindsay Dorado, Kalisto, Rey Mysterio, and Sin Cara. Just for the hell of it. Why not? Against Andrade, Cien Almas, and uh, I don't know, who would you pair him with? Uh, Primo and Ethico. And... I'm struggling to come up with a couple more people. Uh, uh, certainly not Del Rio. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Why don't throw two white guys in for variation? <laughs> R-Truth and... Um, yeah, yeah R-Truth probably thinks he's a luchador. Yeah. Why not? And I'll play the role of Jordan here and say, put Zelina Vega in the match. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, here we have uh, Callum and Robert. Are you going to do the GM mode thing? If so, where? So I still want to do that. And it's just a matter of syncing up schedules and stuff like that. It's been a little weird for the first month of the game. But we will eventually get around to doing that, yes. I'd, I'd like to hope so. But again, it, it, the schedule thing is the real like kick of the teeth because it, it's so difficult to pick a time where... Rob's free, I'm free, and people would actually end up watching. Because remember, there's a six-hour time gap between us. Yeah, and it's 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 also trying to figure out whether it's worth that sort of level of commitment. So we need to just be sure that enough people. We'll obviously try it out. I'm I'm totally not against trying it out, but if we, it proves that like the viewership isn't like worth the effort of trying to sync our schedules up, then we'll probably just call it after that. But we'll wait and see. We'll see how it goes when we right. actually get around to it. And as far as where, we'll figure that out once we figure out the scheduling issue. It it will almost certainly be on Twitch. But right. Yeah. But we don't we don't know what channel yet. Do you think it's backwards thinking on WWE's part to put Andrade San Amos in these matches if he loses all the time? I think WWE thinks he looks strong in defeat, but he doesn't beat your truths, Dillingers, and Caras of the world in the meantime, which means he just loses, so that's what we associate with him losing. Well, this has been an issue for a long time with a lot of different names, where it's like, yeah, but they look strong, yeah, but they lost. That's, this is the Bray Wyatt issue, you know, or, or the the CM Punk well, you're going to be the biggest heel coming out of WrestleMania. And it, but but how? I lost to The Undertaker, who is going to go away. How am I the biggest heel? It's a long he should be... That. Amos should be fighting for the U.S. title. I think we'll get there once we get it on Rey Mysterio, Rey Mysterio hopefully this Saturday at Stark Kid. Well, mm-hmm. it's, it's not like he needs to be fighting for a championship. Or he just needs to be doing something relevant. Because yeah. at the moment, he's just the guy that like your like upper mid carders or main event stars fight some wins against. That's not a story. That's just you're being placed in a, a role because you put on good matches. So go and have a good match with this person. Oh, you're not winning this match. That person's winning this match, but you're the best person to put on the match with. So he needs to just have a story associated with him. And I'm like so dreading the fact that the next story is going to be Oh my god, Selena Vega cost him a match. They're going to break up those two because, like, fuck nice things. Yeah, they can't just fall back on that story and screw things up because they can't think of anything better. Callum, you've had a bad habit lately of just saying the worst possible idea and just speaking it into existence. You need to stop. You know what's even, you know, yeah, that's even worse than that. It's WWE's taking those ideas and saying, like, yeah, that sounds great, and just, like, <laughs> moving on with it. So don't blame me for them being, like, fucking idiots. Which celebrities have liked a tweet of yours? 
Jerry Lawler uh, retweeted something from me the other day on Survivor oh, yeah? Series. I uh, he said a joke during the um, the pre-show, which was evil. It was something like evil is a lot like diarrhea. You can only hold it in for so long. And I <laughs> I quoted it and I just said, LOL, Lawler, you're still the king or something like that or whatever. And he retweeted that. So I've been getting a lot of like retweets and likes from him calling attention to that. But other than that, I mean, I don't tweet all that much. So not much. I mean, I, I think Goldust did at one point. I think that the Fink did. Um. But I usually don't tweet at celebrities either, because it's kind of uh, like you know I I don't follow celebrities. Uh, for me, the most recent occurrence would be Roderick Strong liked and retweeted a gif I made of his uh, jumping knee maneuver to Tyler Bate at I think it was Takeover Brooklyn, and he retweeted that. So I got a little bit of love there, but I've also gotten replies throughout the years from like. CM Punk and Loki and people like that. So, you know, it's kind of nice. Yeah, I'm not really of the habit of, like, uh, including the names of celebrities in my tweets and stuff like that to try and get some callback or anything along those lines. And I usually just use Twitter as just a platform to talk to my friends and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I don't really focus too much on that side of things. I can't really recall. I, I probably have at some point or another just like mentioned someone or in passing and got a note for, for it, but nothing in very recent memory. Now I kind of want to start some sort of Twitter beef with like Ryback or something. It's pretty easy. Try Vince yeah. Russo. That'll work. Yeah, we're Russo <laughs> uh, pretty desperate. Just tweet, hey Russo, we've got beef and see what happens. <laughs> Do you think that Becky calling herself the man is WWE saying the women can't get over without a masculine term? Absolutely not. Whoa, oh, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. Who sent this question in? Peter did. Peter. Petey. Come on now. Uh, yeah. That, that's, this is this is a yeah. play on to be the man, you got to beat the man. Absolutely. And really, even Ronda Rousey on Twitter and even in promos is like, Ah, she's the millennial man. What is she, a penis envy? And it's like, are, are you stupid? Uh, you, you can't understand what she's trying to say by saying I'm the man? Like, I'm pretty sure that's not a term that's too far removed from the zeitgeist or anything. Yeah, it's just a... I think attaching any sort of real, like, gender connotations to it is just wrong. It's like you say, it's like the beat, beat man, beat man thing for Charlotte Flair. She beat, the, she beat Charlotte Flair, so she's the man. But it's just a sense of, it's just a cool name that nobody else was using, and it's so simple and straightforward. Mm-hmm. It help, it's it's part of her character now, and it's that and that character is ruling WWE at this point in time. So just go with it. She's got some good nicknames for herself. Oh like, yeah, she does. I think that the last kicker is a good nickname. Um. They oh they gave her one that they only did it for like a week but I really liked it it was something the, the Scarlet Spitfire yeah I liked that one and uh, I never really liked Straight Fire that was a little bit weird but like I like Becky's uh, whole calling herself the man thing like why not you know no and problem with she, it she's the fucking man have you been watching the product <laughs> right yeah have you been seeing the Twitter stuff you, yeah. Like, if if you want, if anyone listening is like just not following her on Twitter, you have to follow her on Twitter. Pretty much, she's the only person you have to follow on Twitter. She's that good. Yeah, her little thing with uh, Jericho is great. About you know, my concussion was listening to your album. <laughs> just... Yeah. Most recently, she uh, she posted a gif of Ronda being in the ring as the crowd was chanting Becky, and she said, "Ronnie, does this give you meanest envy?" <laughs> and, like, <laughs> like yes. Give her the belt. Give give her all the belts. <laughs> give her the raw I, belt. I, like she should be in the main event at WrestleMania, but she should be beating Brock Lesnar instead. Yeah, I you know I would be completely down for that. And in all seriousness, that, that, there's very few instances where I would agree to something like that. I would be cool with it. Yes. Another question for Peter. Now that evolution is done, now do we start the hashtag give tag teams a chance? Yes, <laughs> please. Yeah. Um, Ben was talking about that in the 
group chat following Survivor Series, and I'm like, yeah, that's actually what needs to happen. Somebody needs to tweet, give tag teams a chance, because it worked for the women, and we need tag team wrestling back in the forefront. That's when they'll be like, all right, we heard you. Women's tag team titles. You'll be like, God damn it, that's not exactly what I meant. <laughs> I've, I've, I've said it like multiple times. I think if you put a focus on tag team wrestling and it's like a straight up two on two match, it can there, there are dimensions to it that can make it better than any singles match can ever be. Yeah. Hot because, tags are like yeah. amazing if done yeah. well. So it needs, it, I'm not saying like it has to be the big focus of everything, but. Like they need to actually be legitimate and have an opportunity to thrive, whereas right now it just feels like they're just there because, well, we just have to be. Because if we got rid of all tag team wrestling, people would just complain so much. So we're just gonna to they're like token people. It's like what the divas kind of felt like they used to be. They're just token elements that they have to do because that's the way wrestling works. And you can tell that it's still a situation where Vince doesn't like tag teams because look at the tag teams that happened at Survivor Series. One match was on the pre-show and it didn't count and they didn't even double check to see what the storyline was supposed to be if you're according to like certain reports. And the other one was, isn't it interesting that some dude pissed himself? So angry. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah. I will say, though, the crowd that was apparently uh, there for the two of five live tapings, they chanted AOPP. <laughs> and that's kind of funny. But that's the crowd. That's not Vince. So. And, I, and I say to those people, you deserve everything you get from this company. Now go, <laughs> like, put your head in an oven or something. <laughs> uh, do you think that Nia Jax should go back to NXT or be fired because she keeps injuring everyone? Uh, we talked a little bit about this here and there, but we haven't really addressed it too much. I think accidents happen, but you have enough accidents. It's clearly not just an accident. And Nia's had something like seven things that she's done that have injured people over a short time frame. Mm -hmm. She's unsafe. Yeah. And, uh, you know, whether it's a punch or she lands weird or she throws somebody weird, they have to address that. It, it can't just be something that they're just sort of like, well, you know, she's related to The Rock. Let's let her do whatever. She needs to either go back to a little bit more of the training side of things, or maybe they just don't use her as much. You know, sometimes sometimes somebody doesn't work out, you know, and they end up having to release them. But she's had enough injuries by now. She should know better. WWE setting, well, I'm not saying that she's the prime example of it, but because many people, they've done it in the past multiple times, but they set dangerous precedents when they see somebody injure someone multiple times, whether it's intentionally or not. And I don't believe in most cases, Nijax's stuff has been intentional, but, and then giving them big pushes off the back of it because they get a lot of attention. And I'm not saying I disagree, well, I don't disagree with the fact that from a, just a business standpoint, that they're pushing Nia Jax hard and making her exploit this injury that she gave to Becky Lynch to build up her feud with Ronda Rousey. The fact is, she's number one contender for the Raw Women's Championship. That happened before the event, so they should build her up off the back of it. But it sets a bad precedent that, oh, if I just injure someone at the right time, or I just get slightly careless at the perfect opportunity, it could actually lead to bigger things for me than the person I actually hurt. And that's that's something that you just need to curb immediately. And the way you do that is do you have Nia Jax get squashed by Ronda Rousey? She has to get squashed. I mean, actually, I think that she should have a fairly competitive match against Ronda Rousey and then get squashed by Becky Lynch. Yes, yeah. That's, it, if they go with Charlotte, Ronda at Mania, Becky needs to destroy Nia at WrestleMania. Yes. Or... Yeah, or I well, I prefer the idea of like obviously along the lines of Becky facing Ronda, they have her destroy Nia on the road to WrestleMania, because then it just makes her look pretty awesome that she just gets Nia, puts her down into this armor, and just doesn't let go. Say, oh, you you wanted to like smile about, punch me with this fist, and then she just keeps pulling on the fist and like damaging it beyond recognition. 
is the Hell, only like uh, add insult to injury. Have Becky Lynch punch her afterward, and then pretend that Nia Jax got injured too. <laughs> yeah, sounds good to me. Oh, we have here we have. Do you think Brian winning the title by turning heel was to pay tribute to Eddie Guerrero's lie, cheat, and no. steal? Eddie passed on that day. Brian won the title thirteen years later. Definitely not. Uh, I don't think that they keep track of anything like that. I, I'm going to just say, I know we'll talk about it more when we get to TLC, but Brian's promo last night sold me on Daniel Bryan being a heel. I, I'm i glad they did this turn. Just to be clear, my issue has not been that Daniel Bryan turns heel because I don't think he can pull it off. I think it's that they can't pull it off because look at the roster. Who's he feuding with after Styles? Yeah, that's the big issue. I'm not entirely convinced of that. Prime. I think it's a good change in character. So, and we'll just see how the character develops. It's off to an okay start with that promo. Uh, the, I think he just turned heel because he wanted to turn heel and they wanted to turn him heel. I think there was just a realisation that the way they built up his character as babyface since his return had been growing stale and they need to change something up. Yeah. And they just went, you know what, we'll do that and we'll figure it out. And if other people fall by the wayside, then hey, they fall by the wayside. And that's why we won't see certain people over the course of the next couple months. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I really like it, though, because a lot of people don't realize we haven't seen a serious heel Daniel Bryan in WWE. Last time he was heel, he was used primarily as a comedy character. So I think it'll be a good, you know, shift for him. I also think, though, if he wants to be a full-on heel, he needs to shave that fucking hair a little bit and get rid of that beard to a certain extent. Because when he's when he's got all that going on, I don't take him all that seriously. Like, what the fuck was that shirt that he was wearing? What, so you want him to be clean-shaven with short hair? Do you, do you remember what Brian looked like with clean he's <laughs> not, with short hair? Not necessarily clean shaven and short hair, but just like he, he looks like he's got fake, like, I don't know, like extensions on for both to me. Like, it's just, it's too scroungy, and I don't buy him as like a, a fighter. I buy him as a homeless person, sort of. Like, well, that's why I want it to go wilder. I want it to be even wilder than it is right now. So, he actually, just like you can see his brain unraveling, essentially. I'm with Cal. If he does that, then that would explain that sweater that he had on. That was really ugly. Uh, do you think that Roman Reigns can beat cancer? I mean, I've, we of uh, course yeah. don't know. I just to answer that one. Hold on. Read, read the whole question, because I know this is a long one. Read the whole thing. Uh, do you think Roman Reigns can beat cancer? The Anawai family doesn't live long. Peter Maivia dead 45. Yokozuna dead 34. Rosie dead 47. Umaga dead 36. Gary Albright dead 36. He was on the tree on Wiki. Just saying Roman is 33 with his genes. He could be coming up on his life expectancy, which is 39 and a half. I came up with 39 and a half because that is the average of the life of the men mentioned before your 39.6. Six months of a year is half. Uh, Rikishi. Yeah. <laughs> Samu. Yeah. yeah. It's... Afa. How old is Afa? Afa's still training people. Sika. He's still alive, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like you can't you can't just quantify it along those lines, essentially. Yes, there have been like premature deaths in that family. But it and what let's not face any bones about it like there is a chance that roman passes away from cancer yeah it's definitely just, a chance but you don't want to think about that Absolutely you want to just not. constantly be thinking that he's going to beat it and till if, if if and when he doesn't which hope and pray that that's no, never the case but yeah he can beat cancer Oh, and keep before. in mind, too, that like Umaga dead at 36, Rosie dead at 47, Yokozuna dead at 34. These guys were obese. And, and a lot of it is substance abuse related as well. Right. Substance abuse, obesity, heart problems. Those are the things that really did them in. So even though Roman Reigns doesn't have that, he has cancer, which is a completely different animal and not something that can be fixed as well as like, well, you lose weight and your your health improves. He's a lot healthier in certain other ways, so you just got to hope for the best. And if 
it's true about what people say about him being like one of the toughest people that they know, then hey, maybe he's got a good shot, you know? I was put it out there as well. And this may just need me th- trying to put some, like, giving credit to WWE where it's undue. I don't think they'd be making references to him on television if they thought he didn't, he wasn't going to beat this. Yeah. Because otherwise that would be a level of callousness that I didn't even think they were possible of achieving. Agreed. Let's go with the final one from Peter. Do you think Drew McIntyre will turn babyface before he wins the US, uh, the, you know, the Universal title? Nope. I, yeah, I think he's the, the big heel challenger rather than the babyface. Yeah. Do you think he's champion by WrestleMania or well after? If I was a betting man, I'd go after WrestleMania. Yeah, it wouldn't shock me if they tried to put the title on him at WrestleMania, but I don't think that they're going to. I think that they're going to have him win it afterward. It would actually surprise me more if he won the title at WrestleMania than if he won the title of the night after WrestleMania. I mean, I'm still not... I mean, I know they're grooming him for, like for that role, but at this point in time, like, you see what they've done with Samoa Joe and stuff like that. You don't know whether he will actually ever get the Universal Championship. <laughs> I mean, they could just keep it on Brock Lesnar for 20 fucking years. And they might. <sighs> Let's go to Frankie's questions. Do you think we're getting a Sheena Io Shirai feud for the title, or could Bianca Belair turn babyface and fight Baszler, or is it just Candice LeRae? Shirai makes, uh, Shirai makes sense to me. Mia Yim could be a uh, possibility. I'm I disappointed with what they've done with Candice. I don't think Candice is ready for the title yet. No, nah, not at all. Yeah, they've they've kind of like put the brakes on her a bit. She just doesn't appear as much. Doesn't have any sort of focus story, so that's a bit disappointing. They won't. They're not going to turn Bianca Belair face, at least not until after she loses, which hopefully won't be for a while because the undefeated thing is still going well. So I think Io Shirai or, or Dakota Kai makes the most sense right now. I could see Biel- Belair being face though. That's the thing. She acts like a heel, but she doesn't act the same as some other heels do. You, like, she kind of well, she, plays she ha- to the crowd a little bit, you know? She has something that I'd like to turn, like, rock charisma. Yeah. Which is where you're complete and total dick. Everyone loves you. Right. So I could see her being like, well, I'm the undefeated and I'm going to fight Shanna. And that she'd definitely be the baby face. Oh, yeah. In that feud. And who knows? Maybe that's their plan for uh, Phoenix? Or maybe that's their plan for... Was it uh, uh they're calling New, it ta- New York. take over New York because they don't want to call it Brooklyn again? I would be against it. We get to get the title one Belair at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, she's like she's the biggest deal that they have right now. Baszler is. Well, but besides Baszler, but yeah, you know <laughs> what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like they're gonna be like, no, 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 we're gonna go with Aaliyah instead. Like she's a jobber in that. Well, poor Aaliyah. But there have been weird things, too, with the NXT women. Like, Liv Morgan was on TV for a minute, and then she got immediately called up to the main roster. There's a chance Bianca just gets called up before she even gets a shot with the title. True. She could stay undefeated in NXT, come up after WrestleMania or something. And lose immediately, because they're stupid. Yeah. Probably would, too. That's the thing. She'll lose in a fucking roll-up. Ugh. Which celebrities would you rate as a perfect ten? Well, how are we how are we judging this essentially? Oh, like physical attractiveness. Which celebrities am I rating a perfect ten? That's I'm assuming so. It. Yeah. <sighs> Two that come to my mind are Kate Beckinsale and Allison Brie. I'm a pretty big fan of Aubrey Plaza, so I'm gonna say her. Uh, I'm trying to think. I have like Christina Hendricks coming to mind hmm. uh, for me, and then maybe like Cameron Diaz, like pre ninety five. Can I ask? <laughs> yes, definitely. Not a uh, what was that fucking um, Charlie's Angels? <laughs> she yeah, got like, a real big head about herself. Mm. Where is she now? Retired. <laughs> Has she actually retired? A fish. Uh, she said so. Yeah. Oh, well, I, huh. You never know with these. They, they, Diaz like said it. she was retired. I think they said it, like they did some sort of 
meet up with the cast of The Sweetest Thing, which is one of her lesser known movies with Christina Applegate and Selma Blair, I think. And uh, she referenced it. I don't know if she said explicitly, I'm definitely retired, but like, no, she hasn't she worked. Has. All right. She's apparently, I'm looking it up now, she's apparently stated she's actually retired. Acting is one of those things to me that makes me go like, he's retired from acting. You're never like, really retired. Come on. It's like you know? wrestling. You never retire. It's like you you just don't take on physically demanding roles that would be like long shoots and stuff. But yeah, somebody gives you a role where it's like, hey, could you uh, play the part in this movie and it's going to take three days to film and you're just basically sitting down in a chair? You fucking take the job. Come on. You're not, you're not better than that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now I'm all salty about that. Um, what's the worst commercial you've seen recently? Fucking all of them. They're all terrible. Yeah, they're all pretty bad. I tend to just fast forward through all of them. It's pretty much the worst ones are the ones where I think they've gone overboard with these characters where it's just like, oh, we're trying to sell you a product like car insurance or, I don't know, like a bathroom cleaner or something like that. So you've created this superhero or this cartoon dog that's going to sing all about it. It's just, yeah. The progressive chick. Yeah, that too came to mind for me too. The, uh, you know what I really, really hate? Little lungs in a great big world. I know. We, we've talked about this before. And every time I see those Fuck. commercials, I, I think of you. I hate that so much. And I hate that. I mean, I, I like the message that they're saying, but that commercial that's been going on recently with, with the, the, vaping. Uh, I hate the, it. Yeah, the vaping I honk in the horn thing. I just have to mute that because it's just like, I get it. But also, I'm not the type of idiot who vapes or smokes. So I don't need to listen to this all the time, you know? Yeah. I made, I made that decision a long time ago. Like, yeah. I'll choose not to do something stupid. All commercials are crap. <laughs> mm. Actually, well, one that's really good and it airs every Christmas is the M and M's Christmas commercial. <laughs> he does exist. They do exist. I love that. And the Coke commercial this year for Christmas is really cute. So that one's good. I don't think I've seen that one yet. But you know what's uh, one of the more effective ones for me? If you're talking about Christmas ads and stuff. And clearly, other people agree too because they just refilmed the damn thing, and that was it. But it's that Hershey Kiss one, where it's just uh, oh, we, we wish, wish you a Merry Christmas there. with I little love bells. That so much. It's so simple, and it's just like, hey, it's Christmas. Hershey Kisses are good, and every time I see that, I'm just kind of like, fuck yeah, they are. Like it, just, it works. <laughs> you know, that was a really bad commercial. I haven't seen in a while. The rest hold. <laughs> Those are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, they weren't so much commercials as, well, we need to figure out something to do on Wednesdays. <laughs> it felt like it was just something that I just immediately had the skip button on for. So. Yeah, I don't Just immediately assume it's commercial. They were crap. Uh, that's why at the end of the year awards, whenever I would put down, like, worst segment, I would vote for the rest hold because I was like, I don't fucking like doing these. Uh do you think that we're leading towards Ciampa Riddle at TakeOver New York? If not, what do you think will happen? To me, it depends on if WWE does the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Uh, I'm still going with my idea I had said before. Triple Threat, Gargano, Black, Ciampa. I'm going as... I think Riddle will have a prominent match to take over. He might fight for the North American Championship or something like that, but I I think New York is just going to be Ciampa Gargano again. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't be shocked uh, if that was the case. I think you get the triple threat at Phoenix. Black goes up through the Royal Rumble. And I think you get Ciampa Gargano in their final match at TakeOver New York. Loser leaves town or something like that? Uh, God, it has to be some, like, okay, this is it. You cannot fight anymore. You know what I mean? It has to be that kind of a stipulation. If you, this is a good question. I like this one. If you were able to know the one hundred percent truth of a question in the world, what question would you ask? Hmm. Wow, this is one of the moments where I should have prepared ahead of time. <laughs> what's the my my question would be? What's the answer to this question? That'd be. I'm trying. Well, to then think. then you're stuck, as and you go, God, crap! I know the answer to that, but now I can't ask a second one. Yeah. Uh 
it wouldn't be anything like the meaning of life things. I think I've kind of got that figured out. But maybe something. I'm trying to think of like just like an uns like one of these unspoken trips, like or something along the lines of are there aliens? Or are we the only intelligent life on Earth? Not on Earth, but like in the world, in the universe. If I'd know if if the answer could be something I'd just like say a straight yes or no, then I'd probably ha- I'd have a lot of questions about other things. Like if the answer was yes, we're the only intelligent life on in the universe, that raises just so many questions. Yep. <laughs> yeah. About how the fuck has this happened? Like, <laughs> but then if it is like, well, the answer is probably as it would be no, then you have a, a bit more impetus to explore and search the, the galaxy to, and the universe to try and find interesting stuff. But then you are plagued then forever if it's like, are are there aliens that exist in it? Because yes, then you go, I want to know what they are. Like, <laughs> Well, maybe you could try and phrase the question to figure out where they are at some point. But Here's my cop out for this to get around that. I wonder if it's my cop out because I have one too. My my go to was write up a sheet of questions, and my question is, what are the answers to these questions? Uh, yeah. that's, Which is like that's, that's like the, the loophole. That's like a genie vote wish for more wishes. One. Yep, it's like you can't wish for more wishes. Okay, well then I wish that I had the power of a genie to grant myself wishes. There you go. Boom, more wishes, fucker. Like you know what I mean. But if I couldn't do the sheet thing, it would be. This is another cop out, but it's it kind of answers two questions. What is the meaning of life according to God? Because if the answer is, well, there is no God, well, then I don't give a shit about what the meaning of life. There is no meaning of life. And if the answer is, well, and then the answer of whatever the meaning of life is, it also proves whether or not there is a God. So I get two answers. I I really like that. I see. I have questions along the same lines, but since you guys have already touched on that, well, then I'm just going to be cheeky here and say, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? <laughs> that was one of the ones I was thinking. It also popped in my mind uh, recently, or actually, it's probably like two years now at this point. Uh, they did a story in DC where Batman sat on the Metron chair, which is supposed to have like all the knowledge of the universe. And he said, what is the Joker's identity? And it was this big mystery because he was all like, what? And they didn't tell you what the answer was. And the answer was, which Joker? And it was this whole thing about there's three Jokers now. And I'm like, so part of me would be at least a little bit tempted. It's like, what you can ask me one question. What is it? What's the Joker's identity? (laughs) And if it came back, which Joker? I'd be like, God damn it. (laughs) It fucking happened to me too. Actually, I missed a big question. Who actually shot Mr. Burns? It was a baby. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they gave me that answer, I still wouldn't believe it. So. Well, which movie that doesn't currently have a sequel do you want to see happen? I went through my list of movies of because uh, I, of course, because I have too many goddamn lists. I have a list of ranking every movie that I can ever think of that I've ever seen in my life. And uh, most of the movies that I really, really love either have sequels or if you put a sequel to it, it would ruin it. Like Fight Club or Inception or K-Pax or Stranger Than Fiction, you know. But the couple that I thought of were Chronicle 2. Could be kind of fun. Uh, I still think that they should have had a third movie for Tron. Uh, Tron sucks, but Tron Legacy I liked. So give me a follow up to Tron Legacy. I still want to see another Power Rangers movie. And the weird answer I have, meet Joe Black 2. It sounds ridiculous, but follow what happens when Claire Forlani's character is going to die. I think you could get a good story out of that. Especially if uh, Brad Pitt does that whole Jamaican accent again. Just because that's funny. Mine would probably be Somehow Rob is uh, talking to us from a completely different state. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it's like you traveled a mile away. You're you're so far away, Rob. Where did you go? Did it did it get bad? 
Yeah, is your microphone on the opposite end of the room? No, it's same spot. Oh. I, hey, you're oh, now, now. now you're back. Okay, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, what are you saying from over there? <laughs> mine would probably be a DC animated related. Like, I would want a sequel to the the Batman Beyond. What was it the, not the Killing Joke? Um, the Return of the Joker for Batman Beyond because I think that show left some things open and I'd like to see them wrapped up nicely. Uh, movie wise, like Tony said, I love Fight Club. Wouldn't want to see a sequel though. American Psycho got a sequel and it wasn't great. Ooh, that was bad. Yeah, I was, so you know sometimes things are better left alone. But I guess uh, No Holds Barred 2 with, uh, <laughs> instead of Hogan and Zeus, it's like John Cena and who who would be a, a good Zeus for 2018? Uh, the Rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, The Rock is playing Zeus and, you know, Cena is Riff. <laughs> Fuck it, Cena Hogan. <laughs> Cena to Zeus. <laughs> yeah, I think Devo can use the money. <laughs> what about you, Cal? Any movies that you want to see a sequel to? Um, I'm trying to think of... I mean, I'm a big fan of uh, The Princess Bride, which I know is a long time ago, but it would be quite interesting to see just like another story developing with those characters, obviously with different actors at this point. But Anybody want a peanut? Uh, this time it's anybody want a cashew. Other than that, there's not too many that I can think of that don't already have sequels attached to them. Is it? Yeah. It's, maybe we haven't had a second Hulk movie yet, have we? Uh, for follow up to Incredible Hulk. Yeah. No, because the distribution rights are all fucked up. Ah. Oh. Universal owns the distribution rights, but Fox, uh, but Marvel owns the character rights. So they well, can they use really Hulk. Them. Yeah, they can use Hulk in Avengers movies, but they can't brand any film as a Hulk film. That's why Planet Hulk was kind of merged into uh, Thor Ragnarok. Do you think they could do something like a super, a super bad se- sequel? Like Maybe, just like yeah. them as adults now. And see That'd if they've actually funny. developed some sort of maturity. That'd be pretty funny. Has there ever been an event in your life which would be a good movie? Uh, I can't think of any that would be a good movie for me. My life and the characters in it would be more fitted for a sitcom. That's what I got, yeah. I actually had uh, notes for that one time. I was writing up uh, an idea of a TV show that would revolve around like an exaggeration of what happened in high school with me. So, like, the characters would be, like, very similarly named to people that were in my high school. And, I mean, not, like, you know, what happened to me in high school. Like, nothing happened to me. But it was just kind of like, you know, these are some funny things that I, you know, some stupid antics that I got involved in and whatever. And, like, let's let's amp up the volume a little bit. But that's more of a TV show. Like, there's no one single thing that's ever happened to me to be like, that's you know, the harrowing tale of, I don't know, that really good plate of pasta I had one time or something like yeah it's just sort of like yeah my life's not been eventful enough to have any sort of movie made out of it unless you just want one of those like I don't know uh I I, I don't know like one of these really like crappy uh you know like re- recording based ones like Blair Witch whatever you just record me like one of my times where I just went to the woods or whatever and just maybe just Found something. Oh my god, is that a body? No, it's a rock. And then we just move on. <laughs> <laughs> is the rock played by the rock? Oh, that'd be so cool. I'd love to have just like a rock with an eyebrow on it. <laughs> <laughs> cake or pie? For Frankie, he says cake all the way. I agree. Cake. cake. Yeah, I got cake as well. Okay. I will say though, Caroline makes a really, really good chocolate pie. And uh going to be eating one of those tomorrow. 
This mm. just took a whole uh, I don't separate to... innuendo kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was so thinking of like the rock in the at Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> after it came out of my mouth, I'm just kind of like, and now I'm just saying after it came out of my mouth. So, uh, <laughs> Thanksgiving, that's what we're referring to. Get your mind out of the gutter, everybody. Yeah, just talking about Caroline's poet. No, no issue about that. Yeah, I mean, I could go on and on about that, but at the same time. Uh, pie itself, though, like uh, like blueberry pie, for instance, or cherry pie, or all that, like, I don't, I think it's just too dry. I'm not a pie fan. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I'm not too big on, like, the pastry thing. For, for Especially, like, in the UK, pies are, tend to be more savory dishes than sweet ones. So we usually put, like, meat and stuff into pies and whatever have you. So the cake thing is just better just because of the sweetness factor. I'll go yeah, cookies cake. over cake or pie, though. It depends on the, on the cookie. It's got to be, like, soft, baked chocolate chip cookies. Oh, well, if you're not counting it as that, then what are you counting? Don't give me that Chips Ahoy shit. Uh, okay, well, I'm glad, you know, because some people really enjoy, like, sugar cookies, and I can't understand those people. I like a soft sugar cookie. Now, you, you throw me off when it's, like... Somebody says, like, I made cookies, and you open up the container, and it's oatmeal raisin. You're just like, no, you didn't. You made a chore. That's what you did. <laughs> it's not a cookie. That's a, you know, travesty. Sugar cookie sounds like something like husbands called their wives in the 50s. <laughs> Give me your sugar cookie. Toots. <laughs> that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, actually, we do have another food question here. What is your favorite type of soup? Frankie's uh... is good old-fashioned chicken noodle. But uh, I got to say, Outback has really good potato soup. And uh, if you ever go to Olive Garden, take advantage of the chicken yoki. Those two are probably my favorites. Cream of crab soup. So Fuck good. yeah, that's good. So good. Uh, I'm a basic bitch, so I like tomato soup. <laughs> Just cream of tomato soup. That's always been my go-to. But also mushroom stuff, mushroom soup as well. I've never had mushroom soup, but I've always wanted to try it. I've only had it as an ingredient to, like, add to something, not, like, a bowl of it. I've had, like, you know, cream of mushroom soup with, like, noodles and something else, whatever, as, like, a like a sauce, kind of. Mm. One time I had cream of asparagus soup, and it was really fucking good. Um, but yeah, I mean, chicken noodles, chicken noodle. You, you don't, you throw a lot of uh, celery in it, it's gonna suck. And you get, like really dry chicken that's going to be terrible too it's it, it all depends on where you get it from i've had really really good new england clam chowder and i've had horrendous clam chowder most of the creamy type stuff i tend to go with that a little bit more fuck like uh you know the vegetable barley or some kind of thing nah screw that uh who should ask if they release more samoa joe finn balor or bobby rude can i opt for none i like all three of them to a certain extent bobby rude please go Please, I I can't. But what they've done to Bobby Roode hurts my soul, guys. Like, damn it. Talk about a guy who, in, in some ways, I felt the same way about Cassius Ono, even though I think over time he's gotten a little out of shape. But Roode was, like, tailor-made for the WWE scene way before the independent boom. And I don't know how they have relegated him to what they have. Yeah, they've really been crapping on him lately. It's because, like, Joe, I'm glad that he's just there as Joe. You know what I mean? Because I never thought that would happen. But Bobby Roode, I expected more with. I mean, in terms of, like, like you said, Tony, you don't want to get rid of any of them because if you are going to watch WWE, these guys are good enough. Although I've definitely turned a negative side on Bobby Roode, but I don't have to see him that often, so it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, But... I'd love to see some Mojo in New Japan. Mm. He'd be so good there. But, yeah. And I watched that enough that I would be fine with Mojo leaving WWE and going over to there and being pushed like the top star that he is. All right. So if you had to have one Joe match in New Japan, is it Suzuki? Oh, that'll be. I mean, it's Suzuki or Ishii. Yeah. Really. <laughs> Those just are the main two you guys. You just want to see a match where you don't know one of them is going to make it out of the ring afterwards. Just like one of the oh my god, one of them is actually combusted in the ring. 
Yeah. Who is someone from history? I think that uh, Frankie clarifies that it's dead. Uh, that he would like to ask questions to. I am not a like history is not my thing. So I know a lot of people would be like, I'd love to talk to George Washington or like uh, Benjamin Franklin would be. Uh, it's like I don't care if I. Somebody said like you get to talk to Abraham Lincoln. I'd be like, yo, some of that hat. Like it's just sort <laughs> of. I don't really care all that much, but. I would be kind of interested to ask JFK, be like, yo, you got killed. Who do you think killed you? Why not? Mm. Um, mm. So this has to be a, like, historically, like, political, and we're talking, like, history class history? I'm assuming so. I mean, uh, if you have another idea, then... You can do wrestling means. history if you wanted or anything like that, or a, a family member <laughs> or whatever. Um, wrestling history... I want to talk to Vince Senior and just like, so hey, d- do you know what your son is going to do, and how much do you not like what your son is about to do? Um, history, history. The JFK one is really good. I'd say Martin Luther King. I would like to get his take on certain things by like filling him in on the world today. Get his opinion on it. Uh, again, if you're going like wrestling history based thing, I'd love the chance to talk to Bobby Heenan. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, just like the wealth of knowledge he's had, he worked for so many different promotions. I'd like to know what he really thought about Hulk Hogan and stuff like that. But I guess, it, like, just from general history, I'd be quite interested to talk to maybe oh, I'm trying to think maybe someone like uh, uh, maybe like an Alexander Graham Bell or something like that someone who invented something prominent <laughs> you call up Alexander Graham Bell yeah. you go hello and he goes hello that's how you fucking say that now <laughs> yeah <laughs> but just, just someone who like invented something that's grown in such prominence and maybe just to see whether they recognized whether like see how technology's evolved like with them using a phone or whatever that was just this huge like, cumbersome thing and now i could just show them something that i just carry around in my pocket it's like wow you have pockets now it's like this amazing <laughs> yeah. so like huh wow 2018 multiple pockets what a world Wow, why are you so all so depressed? It's amazing. You know, I would throw Disney in there. Walt Disney would be an interesting conversation. Wow, what did you really think about the Jews? <laughs> oh, Jesus <laughs> well, to be fair, a conversation with Hitler would actually be quite interesting. <laughs> the first question is just like, dude, come on. <laughs> really? And he's like, what? And you're like, everybody hates you. Like, Pretty much, you're the one person everybody in the world can kind of agree on. Dick move, man. Oh, <laughs> you know that kind of thing? oh I'm sorry, it has to be dead people, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Who Who are you going to think? I oh, know it's because then you wouldn't be able to ask Hitler because he's hidden away in t- South America or something. Uh, that's right. Well, then we can't talk to uh, Elvis, Elvis or think. Tupac or yeah, you know, any of these people that would have died of natural causes a long ass time ago, anyway. <laughs> Uh, are you going to see Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse? Yep. I really want to. Uh, it looks amazing, so I kind of have to watch it. You give me a Spider-Man movie, I'm going to see it. If I they like ever were to make that stupid Silver Sable movie, I would have fucking seen that, too. Like, Spider-Man's my second favorite comic book character. You, you tell me that you're going to make a, an Aunt May movie, I probably would watch it. You know? So, of course, I'm going to see it. Even though I don't like Miles Morales all that much. And I hate the animation style. Ugh. But hey, Spider-Man movie. Cool. I'll see it. Uh, let's see. We have the final three questions here. What would you do if you were booking Bray Wyatt? Uh, definitely a baby face. Definitely a completely different character. No more cult leader type thing. I'm over Bray Wyatt being that. Probably send him over to SmackDown. And I don't know really what as far as character wise, but he needs... Something different. I, I I can't deal with Bray Wyatt, being Bray Wyatt uh, being Bray Wyatt anymore. So you would change him up completely, like 
from the shift to Husky Harris, Bray Wyatt, you're talking about a complete shift in that sense? Maybe not a change of the name, but he wouldn't be doing the whole, like, you know, mystical, like, cutting the same promos with the same, like, you know, hey, man, like, that kind of thing. Completely different. Even if he was a joke character, like, even if we have to ruin his credibility, fucking go with something different. See, I'm going to go in the exact opposite way and buckle down completely on the Bray Wyatt character as he was when they first came in. And I even say when they had the four-man Wyatt family, I think that is Bray at his best. I just would have given him a lot more credible victories so that his character can actually hold up. Because I still consider Bray Wyatt, like, I still think a lot can be done with him. And I hope that when he comes back, he's given a good enough story with a good direction. You know, give him give him Lars Sullivan, you know? Give him a, a new family to build around, because I think that's when he's at his strongest. I think what I would do at this point is try and go some sort of evolution of his character to where he's... I don't want to say, like, doubting himself, but now feels doesn't feel like a god anymore. He feels just like uh, having to adjust to being a mortal, pretty much. The idea that he hasn't got his cult with him anymore. He doesn't have people following him. He doesn't have these mystical powers or different abilities that he used to have. He's just, not so just a guy, but he's a guy having to come to terms with the fact that he is just a guy. And he has to find his new path or new people to attach himself to or a new way of thinking and behaving so it's almost like the the story would be just him trying to find his his place now that he knows that he's not who he said he was kind of like a spiritual journey kind of thing yeah kind of but it's just it's a journey into discovering who he should be but the issue of that being that I don't know who he should be at the end of that, really. So it's more about the journey. It'd be good for a movie because then you just like get the fit to the end. But in wrestling, you kind of have to have a next step after that. But I don't know what that next step would be. Maybe just like a barber or something. <laughs> Brutus the Barber Bray instead. Brutus the Barber Wyatt. Yeah. That's horrible. Who is the biggest bust in WWE that got a lot of hype and you thought was good as well? Absolutely. The first two that came to my mind. I wonder if you guys are going to agree with this. Hideo with Tommy. Mm. That's a pretty big one. And Sin Cara. Mm. They're both pretty big busts. But I think there are a few like more if we were to stretch back the um, the annals of time a little bit. Uh, one of the names that pops in my head is Mordecai. <laughs> I was, I was thinking current because it's who is the biggest bust in WWE instead uh, of who was the biggest. So I didn't even think I, about older stuff. But you go back in time, you're going to get a lot better. Yeah. If, if we're talking about like right now, that's the biggest bust. I'd probably say, I mean, Bobby Roode has to be up there. But he's at least had some sort of like recognition in the past. So it was just like a homegrown talent that was like meant to get a lot of hype. Oh, it's on that we thought was good as well. So it can't be even Murray. <laughs> um, I would, I would argue Hideo Tommy, first of all, spot on. Um, Finn Balor's got to be up there as well. Yeah. And, and like, I get that he's still in a prominent position in terms of placement, but you can tell that there's not a lot of investment on Finn Balor. Like, he's there and he's over, but they don't know what to do with him. And we just talked about him. I gotta say, from NXT to the main roster, Bray Wyatt. I think Bray Wyatt was supposed to be a lot bigger than he was, and his last run was almost comedic with Matt Hardy, and uh, that's a pretty big bust for me, too. We're talking about bust from NXT to the main roster. Ty Dillinger. Ugh! 
Very, very good answer. See, I'm not thinking that that's that much of a bust because in NXT, he wasn't the biggest deal. That's true. So I wasn't expecting him to be well, a world champion. What about Bo Dallas then? Yeah, they made him seem like he was supposed to be a big deal. And, and, he, and he was doing well for a while. And then just then he lost to all truth and then it all just fell apart. And I think he was a great character in NXT, you know. It's just that you get to the main roster and they're just not seen as important. I would argue, I know he's not with the company currently, but Austin Aries. Yeah, that was a bust. I wonder if anybody actually really thought that Adam Rose was going to go anywhere. Oh, 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 oh. I don't think once they, he had that gimmick. I think some people thought that Leo Kruger would get over. But then when he uh, changes into Adam Rose, I think people thought, yeah, this is kind of an open match. And let's put it this way. You can't really call No Way Jose a bust. Even yeah, because though... he came up and it was like, all right, well, this is his limit. Yeah. Oh, he's he made right. his debut. That's it for him. Enzo <laughs> and Cass. Oh, that is a pretty big one, actually. Cass, at the very least, yeah. Well, I thought Enzo was always the bigger. Well, obviously not the bigger oh. in the main or <laughs> if... anything like that, but he he always had the highest ceiling for me. Cause if I Cass he... had Enzo's talking ability, they would have been, you know. Oh, he would have been world champion. He'd be yeah. world champion right now. Screw Brock. Who would like you had brought up Mordecai? But if you go back in time, who do you think are some of the bigger busts? I have bothered Hassan. to think ahead of time. Muhammad that's a, that's a, that's a good one. Chris Masters. Oh, that's that's a pretty amazing one as well. Carlito too. He was a. He, he, I think. I, I don't I know. Think Carlito was fine. Bust. I think he kind of reached the limit of his potential. I'm um, just trying to think. <laughs> Braden Walker. Knock knock. <laughs> I mean, his ceiling was so high as well. I mean, it was going to be amazing. I, I'm just the, trying the to pick... heart dynasty. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, because uh, Tyson didn't really amount to too too much, and D. H. Smith just kind of fucked off. Tamina, maybe. Uh, I I don't think she got a lot of hype surrounding her, so I don't think anyone really expected her to be a huge deal. I think maybe Karma. Mm, yeah, that didn't pan out. One. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, there's a lot of ones, if you like, school history, but it's, it's hard to think of them off the top of your head and stuff like that, but, like, Bill DeMott, when they tried what? to push him for a while. Yeah, they went through a few phases. Nathan of, Jones. Like, oh, that's a very good one. Uh, Albert, too, when they tried to push him as A-Train. Yeah. Yeah, Tiger Ali Singh. Heidenreich. Ooh, yeah, Heidenreich. Gene Snitsky, man. To be, to, be Snitsky. Fair, to, to be fair, the qualifier for this one is that we also had to think they were good as well. Oh, uh, yeah. I forgot about so, that. So element. some of these ones are just like people that they Most pushed of these. that just absolutely sucked. <laughs> well, but like when you're a 10 year old kid and like the main event of Survivor Series is, you know, Maven on a team with Orton and Snitsky on a team with Hunter, you think, okay, these characters have. To go somewhere and like Maven didn't go nowhere. Oh, Snitsky didn't go anywhere. Is is a good one, Mister Kennedy. Mm. Yeah, that's a really good one because I liked Kennedy at the time. And I'll give you one more to to round it out. For me personally, I th- I think he would have been world champion. Morrison. He could have. Yeah, he yeah. could have been world champion. I would have been cool with it. I wouldn't have said bust, but he definitely didn't fulfill all of his potential. And our last question here, uh, Frankie says, fill in the blank, the main event of WrestleMania is... Uh, Mr. T and Hulk Hogan against... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Don't be a dang. Um, Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte Flair. Uh, I think that this whole scenario that they're doing with Charlotte having this edge is because... Somebody backstage, whether it was Vince, Triple H, whoever, they said, well, Becky got over by being a little bit like a heel. Let's do that with Charlotte. That way people like Charlotte the same. Um, I'm going to play it safe and say Universal Championship, 
John Cena, Brock Lesnar. Uh, James Ellsworth versus Enzo Amore. <laughs> uh, that's uh, Prison Mania 35, right? Uh, I'm going to be optimistic. Becky Lynch from the Rousey. One on one. What's the worst realistic main event you guys can think of right now? Roman Re- no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, uh Worst one right now, realistically? I think it would be Strowman Lesnar. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, Strowman loses to Lesnar. Oh yeah, if, 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 if that one. I'll say this though: just Strowman in the main event against Lesnar. Period. We already know we're getting this at the Royal Rumble. If you try to convince me, first of all, it was a hard sell for Crown Jewel, but I thought they would just put the belt on Strowman just to get it over with. But if you try to convince me that Strowman is going to beat Lesnar after losing to him like three times, I I don't buy it. And more importantly than that, I don't think Strowman is a good final shot for WrestleMania. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I just think he's been played out too much already. And especially if Lesnar was to win, that would be even worse. But I think the match itself is just pretty standard and i would say lesnar versus returning superstar a which is different than cena i'm talking about like if they try to bring back a let's say undertaker or a batista or a goldberg again you know what i mean like i don't want to see a guy who hasn't been in the ring for uh you know at a steady pace for almost a decade come back and defeat lesnar Basically, the yeah. worst main event involves Brock Lesnar. <laughs> yeah, for the most part. Unless they try to sell me on, and I love both guys, but don't sell me on Undertaker Shawn Michaels. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of ways that this could go really poorly. So I'm hoping that it's something good at the very least. We'll figure that out in a, probably about a month and a half. And... uh then we'll probably bitch and complain about it. <laughs> but that is it for the mailbag. Thank you to everybody for your questions. And anybody who didn't get a chance to send in a question, we'll obviously be doing this again in December. So start thinking of them. Start sending them in if you want to actually get them in ahead of time. And I'll backlog them for the December one, which will be happening the week before the Smart Cat Moment Awards because that's the easiest way to kind of do that. So kind of the second to last week in December is, but we'll basically be doing that. So you got a little bit of time, but uh, I also want you to drop your comments below and tell me what you think about these questions and our answers. Just kind of fill us in on what's going on in your brain. Hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel. If you have not done that already to be aware of the next couple of things that we got coming your way, which will be the hot tags and the uh, tournament review for champs giving because we're on the finals now. It is CM Punk against Steve Austin. That's what you guys picked. It's not necessarily what we would have picked. Uh, so we're going to run that tournament down next week after you know we reveal who uh, who won the tournament and everything and get into that. That'll be the main event unless something crazy happens with WWE. Then we'll tack something on or you know figure it out. Uh, just check off that little bell for the notifications. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Smartout Moment. Follow the SmartoutMoment.com site itself for everything that's happening there. If you got a little spare change you want to throw our way, the Patreon and the merch shops are things that you can do. Hit that like button, hit the uh, share, follow things, forward things, you know, whatever. Do do that stuff. Stuff's good. And uh, fanboysanonymous.com is also a place where you can do stuff. So click all that stuff there. Follow me at Tony Mango and A Mango Tree and everything else. That's enough for my plugs. Callum. You can find me on Twitter at Wigmeister14 and check out the power rankings that will be coming out sometime later this week and every other uh, weekly article and any article whatsoever on Um You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DudeFelice. Of course, check out WrestleZone.com for your daily wrestling news. Stories up right now, including Braun Strowman out of the Mixed Match Challenge due to injury. 
I'm going to have an update on Chris Jericho and Jim Ross's involvement on the potential new All Elite Wrestling promotion. And you should also check out the Triple Threat this week. It might be a little different. I have a different idea concerning Thanksgiving, but I'm not going to hold people to getting it up too quickly because tomorrow is, in fact, Thanksgiving. Other than that, uh, timekillerapparel.com, buy a t-shirt, buy a hoodie. You go to the Smart Out Moment T Public site, they're running a sale because it is Black Friday, so everything's 30% off. So go get a t-shirt there and support us. And that's it for plugs. All righty, everybody. So I mentioned this before, but I'll say it again. Hopefully, if you celebrate it, you have a happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe. And if you beat up anybody during Black Friday, send us a video. Uh, just, you know, hit Kyle that drivers, high knee. Power drivers aren't banned in real life, guys. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. So thanks for listening to this, everybody. That'll do us in. This has been another Smart Count Moment, and we're being counted out.